Senator John Kelly, you have six minutes. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. I uh, want to welcome the Minister here again on this very important issue. I think we've had um, a couple of interactions already on this issue, uh, Minister, and you know that I've beaten this drum for the last 14 months with the introduction of my uh, wind turbines bill, which I think was very reasonable, which uh, something similar was happening in the UK at the same time, and they had a lot greater setback distances than what I was proposing. So uh, I also have to say that I got my bill endorsed by many county councils around the country. And uh, of course, then when it went as far as Donegal County Council, the county manager asked that they lift the 500 meter guideline that was already in place so that they can put them at every crossroads in the, in the county. Since the introduction of my bill, uh, it seems to be that there has been a race to the finish line, that these uh, wind energy developers are trying to get their planning permissions in as quickly as possible in case anything changes with, re with regard to the guidelines. And you know, Minister, uh, you were in the House here last week when I, on the issue in relation to the European Court of Justice findings, that all of the planning permissions granted between 1999 and 2012 were deemed illegal because they didn't comply with, a, with an EU directive. So as a result of that court ruling, and I put it on the record at this house the, the last week, it's going to leave the government, the local authorities, and the wind energy sector uh, open to be sued at some stage in the future unless, uh, unless uh, the, the issue is dealt with. And I told you how that could be dealt with, and that is uh, a revoking of some of the planning permissions by the county councils, and also a withdrawal of the refit um, funding that these wind energy sector get. <clears throat> As regards the effects of wind energy or wind turbines on people, all you have to do is come down and talk to Dorothy and Michael Cain and, and Russ Gammon, who live 750 metres from wind turbines and had to leave their house. Now, I passed by those turbines as it happened last week on a road that is quite close to them. And to be honest now, they're 100 metres high. It's scary to look at them. They're monstrous. And they're only 100 metres high. When the guidelines came in in 2006, they were based on turbines that were 54 metres high, half that size. The present uh, uh, set of turbines that are going up all around the country are as high as 185 metres high, three and a half times the height of the original turbines, and yet we have the same setback distance guideline of 500 metres. That is being breached right across the country. Um, <clears throat> This whole wind energy policy is, it was initiated by the last government minister, and I just think that we're just playing along with it. And I think that, as Senator Barrett has quite rightly pointed out, we need to look at the economics of wind energy. Now, I have stuck to the core issue here all along in 14 months, planning and the distance that these things should be from people's homes. The other broad debate is what Senator Barrett is saying there. Are we losing money on this? And it appears we are. We're not going to have cheaper electricity. We're going to have dearer electricity. And by the time we're ready to export electricity to the UK, it could be too dear, they won't take it off us. We could be landed with it and we would have lost a lot of money. And as I said, what cost-benefit analysis has been done up to date by people that know the business? I mean, with the greatest respect to civil servants, it was the same civil servants that was in place since 2006 that are still looking at this issue. Um, I'm dealing with uh, people in every part of this country, from Damien McKelly above in Donegal, who was quite rightly asking questions about a wind turbine that fell down in Glinties there on the 25th of March. And he's not getting answers as to how that happened, how a wind turbine collapsed, getting no answers from anybody. You know, um, I, you know it, really is, it really is kind of frustrating that we're, we're still talking about this 14 months on. As Senator O'Donnell quite rightly pointed out here, all the public representatives are representing the people right across the country that are affected by these. We're representing their views. And we're in the majority. But the civil servants' views are the ones that have been listened to, and not ours, and not the people that we represent. Um, in Roscommon, I, I'm dealing with Mike De Jong and Ted Kelly, two very intelligent people. Ray Byrne and Wexford, very intelligent person, very well read, know what they're talking about. Peter Cross and above in Donegal, Yvonne Cronin in, in Galway, all of these people that know what they're talking about, and we're not listening to them. We're listening to a group of civil servants that are its business as usual. 
Just in relation to the whole area of, you know, the excuse that we're listening to the whole time, we have targets. Yeah, we have targets that were set back in 2000 and whatever, six, that we have to reach 40% of our energy, by uh, green energy, by 2020. Now, I mean, on what scientific basis did we come up with 40%? Why wasn't it... 80%? Why wasn't it 20%? Who came up with 40%? And why 40%? And when we come up with 40%, were we also looking at the, uh, the, the whole uh, infrastructural issue of what is 40% going to mean? Is it going to mean? Is it going to mean that we're going to have turbines at every crossroads in the country, crisscrossed by pylons all over the country, and absolutely destroying our beautiful landscape? And I know that there was a survey done above in Donegal recently, and it was basically that the people were saying that if the, uh, the countryside was going to be destroyed by wind turbines, it would have a serious effect on, uh, on uh, tourism in, the, in their county. So I know, Minister, that the economics of wind energy is not your remit, it's the Department of Energy, but I would plead with you, Minister, to listen to the views of all of the people that are going to speak here today in relation to how wind turbines and wind farm developments are really affecting people that have to live beside them. Thank you. Thank you.